Hey YouTube, so this will be the last video in this series for building machine in Packer. We're just going to take a look at the very last section in the templating file. I just wanted to bring to your attention the fact that we can actually run some um, functions inside of the templates themselves. So if you want to do something a little bit more complicated than what I've done to bring the machines online, there's quite a bit of functionality inside of the templates themselves. So like I said in, in one of the previous videos, the variable files can be passed in at the time when you're telling Packer to actually build. So that's going to look like, like that, what I've just highlighted now. So you're going to say Packer build hyphen var and then the name of your variable equals the value of a variable. It is pretty useful to do if you're going to be um, typing out secrets or something like that. You don't really want those kinds of things stored in a source control management system that somebody can then stumble across, especially if you're going to put it out on something that gets out people are going to be trawling through that looking for secrets um, rather just add them in at runtime so if you don't want to write add it in at runtime you can also add it in using a file so that's going to look like this what I've highlighted over here again not really for secrets more for configuration that may change so if you've got say multiple different OS's and you have the same thing installing on them you may want to um, have a set of variables that are in a, in this file and then you can just bring that into multiple different OS's which means you don't have to have multiple different JSON files for your different OS's you can just bring it all into one place and then push that into your source control management and then when you do your runs you can just bring the file in so you don't have to use one or the other you can use them together so like I say you don't want to be keeping your secrets inside of template files or anything that you're going to check into some sort sort of source control management you want to be doing that stuff as and when it's needed and preferably in a way that doesn't expose it out to the rest of the world and then add in your json files to add in the variables that you want to keep consistent across your runs so you can see in this part that i've highlighted there's a section where we're doing just the bars and another section where we're doing the bar files so variables also allow us to um, interpolate inside of the, the shells that we're running on our machines. And in this instance, you can see we've got an if statement that brings in a variable from a user-defined variable, which would give us like a true or false or something like that. And then we would do something based off of that. Now, it's very, very powerful to be able to do something like this, which means that you don't need to go and try and figure out something from an environment inside of your script and get really, really complicated and very vague about what you're trying to do. You can just feed the stuff directly in using Packer to give you that um, give you that kind of functionality inside of your scripts. But like I said that you in earlier you've got um, some functions available to you. These are a list of the functions and you can take a look at this uh, document page for the actual functions themselves. They can be very useful and we do actually use the functions inside of the JSON file. So you'll see build type is over here where the mouse is at the moment. And we also use build name inside of the script as well. So now you know what those things are actually uh, where they're coming from and what they're actually doing and like I say this stuff can be very useful for you if you're trying to do something a little bit more complicated inside of um, Packer. The last thing I'm going to say now is that um, our JSON file is actually very very simple in terms of what Packer can actually do. Packer is able to um, have multiple different types of machines defined in a single JSON file so if you wanted to, you could try and have like an end-to-end -end development environment for, say, your developers and then something going into production. And that way, everything would actually look the same. So you could define the same machine, um, well, as much as you can of the same machine going into Vagrant and into a box file, which you could then give to your developers. And they could use that on their laptops or their desktops or whatever they're using to develop on. And then going into production and you're using something like AWS or Google Co Compute Cloud, um, you could create um, instances and then configure the instances with the same configuration management that you use to create the development machines. 
The beauty of that is, is that when you run your automated systems, your your output from those systems gives you two machines that that are really, really close to each other and you don't have to then worry about what a developer is working on. It doesn't look like what it is in production and something he hasn't tripped up on in his development environment now all of a sudden leaves his code completely useless in a production environment. You want to try and keep that stuff very, very close to each other, very tightly coupled so that your developers are falling over the problems as soon as possible. That way you don't have... Um, stuff going backwards and having delays for um, rollouts. It's just, it's a nightmare you don't have to deal with. Let's just get Packer to build multiple machines in the same run off of the same environments. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to say on Packer. Um, if you really like the videos, give it a thumbs up, give us a subscribe. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to know about Packer. Um, I'd really, really. I'd really say go look at the documentation first. Documentation for Packer is really good. Um, but yeah, let me know how you get on.